to our service for the longest night. This is a service to commemorate those who have died, those who are grieving, the heaviness of heart that sometimes accompanies the joys of the Christmas season. Hope you'll enjoy the service and the music, the scripture and the word, and in the midst of the darkness, find hope in Jesus Christ. from the 40th chapter of the book of Isaiah. Comfort, comfort my people, says the Lord, your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for her sins. To whom shall I compare me? Or who is your equal, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, who created all these. He who brings out the starry host one by one and calls them each by name. Because of God's great strength and power and strength, not one of them is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and complain, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord? My cause is disregarded by my God. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youth grows grow weary and tired, and young men stumble and fall. But those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, and shall mount up with wings like an eagle. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. The psalm is from Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will neither slumber nor sleep. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will not slumber. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch out, your com out for your coming and your going, both now and evermore. And finally, the gospel comes from the 11th chapter of the book of Matthew. Come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. This is the gospel of the Lord.
garment of life be it tattered and torn the cloak of the soldier is withered and worn what child is this that was poverty born the peace of christmas day the branch that bears the bright holly the dove that rests in yonder tree the light that shines for all to see the peace of christmas day the hope that has slumbered for two thousand years the promise silenced a thousand years the faith that can hobble an ocean of tears the peace of christmas day the branch that bears the bright holly the dove that rests in yonder tree light that shines for all to see the peace of Christmas Day Add all the grief that people may bear the total the strife the troubles and care put them in columns and leave them right the peace of Christmas Day The branch that bears the bright holly The dove that rests in yonder tree The light that shines for all to see that bears the bright holly the dove that rests in yonder tree the light that shines for all to see the peace of Christmas Day This is a challenging time of year for people who are grieving. It's true any year. Grief is never easy, but it's always harder during the holiday season, and probably especially so during 2020. First of all, there are a lot of reasons for grief, not just death, but also loss of health, job, economic security, companionship, connection. There's a lot to deal with. There's a lot of grief and sorrow. But in addition to that, during this time of year, it just seems heavier. The nights are longer and darker. It's one of the reasons we do a, a longest night or a blue Christmas, because these are the darkest days of the year. And sometimes that, that darkness of the soul settles upon you at a time when you're supposed to be lit up like the Christmas tree. And so the contrast is that much stronger. When everything else is supposed to be happy, you feel sometimes the depth and the struggle of life. My sister lost her son to his battle with depression just a little over a year ago. And so last week I was thinking about that. And so I texted her to find out how she was doing and how things were going. And we were engaged in a text conversation because I couldn't talk very well because of COVID. And as we were texting back and forth and she was talking about feeling the spirit and the presence of her son, and she did give me permission to share this conversation in this sermon. 
But as we were exchanging our conversation, as we were texting back and forth, I'd been listening to Pandora. And a song came on Pandora as we were talking. And it's the first time that I'd heard the song this entire Christmas season. And it's the song that Duncan will be singing after this sermon. It's called, There's Still My Joy. And when it came on, it, it was one of those profound God moments, one of those profound God things about feeling and knowing the presence of God, even in the midst of struggle and grief. I remember the first time I heard the song. It was in December of 2012, almost exactly this time. I was out for a walk on a cold night. I was walking my dog and as we were walking, I was listening to my CDs, some music. I was listening to Pandora again and the song came on. And it hit me so profoundly because at the same time, the father of my children was dying. We had spent the last month preparing for him to die and he was nearing the end. And when the song came on and it talked about dealing with grief at the same time as Christmas, well, it struck to my soul, it struck to my, my very center of my being because even though I had been divorced from Steve for seven years at that time, People know who know me know that I divorced the disease that took Steve's life, his alcoholism, but I never divorced him. I never gave up my care and concern and love for him. And so as he was dying, I was grieving not just the loss of my children's father, but also the loss of the love of my life. And so I heard the song and it talked about melding Christmas and the story of Christmas with the, the grief and how, how sometimes those two come together and how really it is a story of a God who became incarnate, a God who became human, one tiny child who transformed our ability to have and understand a God who knows our human frailty and our grief and the amazing grace the thing that is so incredible is that into the midst of this broken, pain-filled world comes this tiny child who gives us a sense of hope and peace and life. It really is amazing grace. So even in the midst of grief, there's still my joy on Christmas Day because Christ comes to us. Joy to the world comes to us. Peace comes to us, even when our souls are restless and weary. And as we mourn the loss of those we love, maybe you've lost someone who died because their souls were weary and they could never, they could never find that place where, where they were able to rest in God. And in death, you might know that they took that yoke and they found that rest that wasn't present in this restless world. That's the grace and the joy of being a person of faith. And that's the hope that we find in the midst of the Christmas season. That we have a God who's, who's not just there when we're soaring up with wings like an eagle or when we're running without being weary. But we have a God who prods us forward when we can walk without fainting, which it's 2020 for a lot of us. We have a God who is present and, and in the midst of challenge and difficulty and hurt and pain and darkness, he's the light of the world because there's still that joy and amazing grace is that we do not run from the pain of the world, but rather we embrace and are embraced by a God who loves us, who knows our human experience, who knows what it's like to live in a broken world and who gives us hope and gives us amazing grace. So if you're seeing this and you're, you're feeling a sense of loss, angst, pain, hurt, hold on to that tiny child. Just as it came on the radio as Gretchen and I were texting back and forth as a, a God moment, 
one of those moments when in the midst of, of talking about grief, there was this spark and this reminder. May you know that God moment as well. That in the midst of the darkness, the light shines through. And darkness, darkness won't overcome it. Because in the midst of grieving hearts, as of one tiny child, there's still the joy to which we can hold on to for eternity. Amen. I'd like to close this service with a prayer that we use during Holden Vespers at Emmanuel. It's from the New Zealand Evening Vespers service. And I think it's a perfect prayer for us to reflect on on the longest night, on this time when we sense the growing darkness and the light to come. A reminder in the midst of grief. Let us pray. Lord, it is night. The night is for stillness. Let us be still in the presence of God. It is night after a long day. What has been done has been done. What has not been done has not been done. Let it be. The night is dark. 
but our fears of the darkness of the world and of our own lives rest in you. The night is quiet, but the quietness of your peace enfold us, all dear to us, and all who have no peace. The night heralds the dawn. Let us look expectantly to a new day, new joys, new possibilities. In your name we pray. Amen. May you know the blessing of a God who gives us tomorrows and who gives us light in the midst of darkness. Oh